since I skipped reviewing the NZXT Kraken Posh generation, I think it's quite alright to check out the new one. This is NZXT Kraken Elite 240 RGB 2024 and it comes packed with uh, incredible uh, LCD screen on the pump block top. Now we're talking about 272 inch IPS LCD screen that is really something impressive, I do have to admit. But then we go with other details because we have loads of stuff going through this one and uh, I have to give some uh, thoughts about that. So what you get inside the box is the Kraken Elite uh, 240 AAO, so pump plus <laughs> tubes plus the radiator. Then we get the F240 RGB core fan, installation accessories, and we get breakout cable set. Now the breakout cable set was a shocker for me because I didn't expect it to have such cables uh, dangling around. But regardless of that, it's quite nicely placed. Apart from the position where it is right in the middle of two tubes, you have a quite thick cables, almost uh, the same thickness as the tubes running at the back and you have to find a way how to hide it. That's the only thing that you need to think of. And basically everything else is really straightforward. So what comes out of those splitter cable, let's call it that way, or how they call it, uh, breakout cable set you have one sata that needs to be connected definitely you have one three pin i think that's dc connection that needs to be connected to your motherboard to power on the pump and the speeds and everything else all together and then what we have is usb 2.0 and additional rgb header for you to connect some other rgb lights uh, inside your chassis now the f 240 core RGB is connected with their proprietary cable directly to that RGB cable which is uh, a bit uh, thinner but wider compared to the original what they usually had. So this is where you need to connect and then you have a quite nice and uh, clean uh, cable management at the back of your case so that's good. Now the uh, F240 RGB core fan is quite simple to actually install you only have four screws compared to regular if you place two fans you have to place eight screws so that kind of shortens down the process of installation. Now installing it on uh, Intel processor it's really straightforward you place four standoffs to the bracket, basically on the motherboard, and after that, you just have to place the pump block top on the processor and tie up four locking nuts. The, the block already has pre-applied thermal paste, so you don't have to worry about too much uh, fiddling around with that, and it's enough thermal paste to get you covered. Now, the interesting thing about everything is that it has a quiet operation. The pump is dead silent because they have a new pump and this is some sort of a custom NZXT turbine pump which they did in collaboration with Cool IT. So I'm quite digging the pump and the noise and everything all together because it really is performing quite nicely. Even with the 240 cooling down to 14700K, it's outstanding. Now going further with that, Let's talk about the screen a bit. So we have 272 inch uh, IPS LCD screen with a resolution of 640 times 640, 60 Hertz. It's software adjustable. So that means you go to NZXT cam and you do everything that you need to do there. And the brightness is 690 Kardea per square meter. So that's impressive as well. Now what you can do inside the NZXT cam software uh, regarding the screen, you can display your uh, GIFs, your favorite GIFs, your images, uh, track real-time system performance, which uh, with the new update, they actually have three sensors showing now. So you could go with, I don't know, CPU, GPU temperature and liquid temperature. Then what you could do is uh, integrate it with Spotify and YouTube and customize the RGB ring with uh, dynamic uh, lighting effects or synchronize it with on-screen content and other RGB devices. But of course you can really go and play and do wonders with it. Uh, the screen is really outstanding and I'm really digging uh, how it looks compared to the past generation even though that was really good but this is outstanding. Compatibility goes from Intel LGA 1851, 1700, 1200, 11.5X and AMD AM4 and AM5. Now time to discuss the tubes. Compared to the last generation, what I had prior to this one, the past generation what I did have was really slick design in terms of the braided part was fixed on the tubes and there was no flimsiness around. In this scenario, what we have is uh, a bit since we most likely have cables running from the pump block top directly to control box, 
it uh, it kind of is loosen up a bit not drastically you won't notice it but when you place the pump block top on the processor it kind of straightens up and it doesn't look that uh, loosen up so that's that's really good in those terms but the initial thought when you see the tubes it doesn't look that uh, perfect like they did in the past uh, AIOs. So they have new cold plates. So it's split flow cold plate that allows coolant to move easily through the channels, uh, which kind of makes, uh, let's say, the distribution across your uh, CPU surface for uh, quick and efficient heat dissipation, which kind of makes sense because you'll see the results uh, quite obvious. And then we go with some specs. You already know everything about the screen. We have NCXT Turbine Pump in collaboration with Cool IT. Uh, 1200 to 2800 RPMs, plus minus uh, 300. And then we go with size uh, 93.5 millimeters uh, with a height 65 millimeters. Plastic cap, plastic ring, cold plate is copper and housing is again plastic. Dimensions of radiator 281 times 120 times 27 with aluminium material. Uh, length of the tubes is 400 CIIR uh, rubber with PET uh, braided sleeving. F240 RGB core, dimensions 240, 120, 26 with maximum speed up to 2400 RPMs. Airflow is 75.12 CFM per fan. Static pressure is 3.3 millimeters H2O. Noise is 30 decibels per fan. Fluid dynamic bearing, eight LEDs per fan, and we have eight pin for PWM and RGB connector. A cable length that runs out of that dual fan, let's call it uh, 600 uh, millimeters. Now for the benchmarks, AIDA64 Extreme Edition, we have 14700K right here and the RTX uh, 4080 Super, which is relevant, but I have to mention that with their N7's uh, Z790 motherboard, Kingston Fury Renegade uh, DDR5 RGB 2x16 8000MHz, CP went up to 82 degrees with clock speed 5400MHz which I would say that's quite solid. Uh, 360 would do a much better job, but uh, regardless of that, this is really good thermals in general. Cinebench from 81, maximum going to 84 only twice. And then I would say an average is 83 degrees, which is again, quite solid. Clock speed 5400 megahertz throughout whole benchmarks. And then what you can see is that from the first to the eighth run, it was actually increasing the score from 31,644 to 33,324. Eventually, last two were uh, at uh, mid-32,500. Uh, but eventually, I think it will definitely go way, way higher. So let's do a small recap here. Uh, I'm digging the design. It's really cool. Uh, unfortunately, the F240 uh, core RGB doesn't have that much brightness as I expected it to be as it has right here, right? So I was expecting it to be a bit brighter. You can crank up the brightness in NZXT cam, but it just doesn't, uh, doesn't show the brightness as it should, as I expected it to be. So that's one thing. The other thing, basically nothing... In particularly when we're talking about the pump, when we're talking about the LCD screen, that's all perfect. And I'm really digging that. But the price of this one is $240 euros. I don't know the price of the screen. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know the price of the turbine. It's completely something out of my scope of uh, uh, research and to see if the, the $240 euros can back up the price of the screen and the pump but it is a bit on the higher scale. I can't deny that. That is just simply, you. what you can do is go with the NZXT Kraken 360, normal, regular one, you still have the LCD screen for the 160. And you save up $80 for, I don't know, if you want to really go crazy with the whole NZXT build, buy an H5. And you can place a 360 in the front. So it's all up to you. Are you more into visual aspect? where we have this insane screen where you can do what you ever want to do with it and still a solid cooling because the 240 is really doing a good job or you're going to go into more rational and you're saving your money to go and invest into something different that will give you more performance well basically the cooling also needs to be good for performance but regardless of that you know what i'm trying to say it's it's a bit over the top it's a bit over the top maybe the screen is really that expensive and in those terms i don't know if they could stretch lower to 200s that that would be a 
let's say more approachable price but that is the only thing that is uh, well let's take this into the into this consideration the price is the only thing that is currently bugging me with this so yeah that that's the only and i didn't expect that thick cable but that is really sortable and uh, everything all together is just quite okay so the conclusion is lcd screen performance uh, visual aspect and everything all together is outstanding I mean, I'm really digging the huge screen. It really fits nicely, in, especially if you go and create a full NZXT build. It's just great. But when you take the price into consideration and when you buy this lovely case, which is 130 with F360 core and one non-RGB fan at the back, and then you go and spend double of that, almost double, for the AAO, that's something uh, in a different segment. But... The price is the only point that is um, a bit too much. Yeah, that's that's the logical explanation of everything. I think you would guy you would understand completely what I'm trying to say, and uh, it comes down basically to personal preference. I, I I can't say you can't get a 360 for with most likely better cooling for the same price or even lower, definitely lower, or just you don't care and you're gonna go with the visual aspect you want a smaller case that can fit 240 and that's it that's my only explanation for the price at this current state so yeah guys that's that's all there is today i'm placing the links for the h5 flow rgb because the case is just outstanding and i'm really digging the case it's really brilliant and you saw the review i don't have to add anything to that and just in case you decide you can go with the NZXT Kraken Elite 240 RGB. The links are in the description below. Hopefully I gave you some more insights if you didn't check for from any other guys uh, doing the reviews. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell, and I'll see you quite shortly in a new one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.